Good morning, City Church family. I hope you are doing well. Uh, I'm so glad that I've got the opportunity to speak to you this morning. Uh, My name is David Howell. For those of you that don't know, I am the uh, campus pastor here. Uh, Over the last couple of weeks here at City Church, uh, Chris has been teaching on increase. He's he's gone through uh, how we are to posture or position ourselves for increase, uh, the pruning that can lead to more increase, and last week, how promises always produce the increase. This week, Chris came to me and he asked me if I would speak on how the prophetic leads to increase. Now, the word prophecy, if we were to break it down, the word prophecy, the best description that I've heard over the years came from a Welsh Bible teacher named Grandparents. And that was that prophecy is a living word from a living God for a living people. A living word from a living God for a living people. Now in Deuteronomy 8 8 verse 3, it says, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Job 33 verse 4, Job says, The Spirit of God has made me, but the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The breath gives me life. When God breathes on us, it, it brings life. Prophecy brings life. Prophecy brings increase. The breath of God, God's words, will always bring life. Now, in my prayer time over this last week, as I was praying about this, I was just like, Lord, I just want you to speak to me. I'm I'm bringing this message on on the prophetic and increase. I want you to speak to me, Lord, and just show me how you view the prophetic in our lives. And I was, and I was, as I was praying about it, I saw a picture and it was an old table. It looked just like this table here. And, and I was like, all right, Lord, I was really hoping you'd give me a really cool picture of like a fast sports car or something cool like that. But you're showing me this wooden table and I kept seeing the legs and I was like, Lord, what are you showing me? And I felt like the Lord said, when you see the legs of this table, these are the prophetic words that I've spoken of your life. Now you see, when we have a table like this, Tables come in all, all shapes, all different types, all, all different sizes. You have some tables that we have computers on, some tables that uh, your family can eat around. Of course, my family can't eat around this because we are a huge family. You have some tables that would hold computer desks. Uh, tables have all different purposes, but one thing that they all co- have in common is they all have legs. And what I felt like the Lord said is these legs, and as I was praying and as I was looking at this table, it looked just like this. Uh, there was pieces of board. There was board being added to it, and, and the structure was changing. And so I was like, Lord, what, what is that? And he was saying, basically, as you grow, the prophetic brings increase. And as I add more to your table, the more that you will be able to handle. Because see, situations may change, finances may change, our jobs may change, our relationships may change. But what doesn't change is the legs, the, the strength that is there, the, the prophetic words that have been spoken on our lives. That will never change. <clears throat> you see, like I said earlier, prophetic words are living words from a living God to a living people. They come, they add stability to our lives. They bring comfort, they bring encouragement. First Corinthians 14, verse three. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and their comfort. Now this morning, I wanna step back and I wanna look at the book of First Timothy. Now Timothy, as we know, uh, he was Paul's protege. Uh, Paul refers to Timothy in, in this book as his son, his spiritual son. Timothy would have been in his 30s. He was an uh, evangelist. He traveled around. He had many different churches, many different cities uh, that he reported to. Uh, But we know, what we do know about Timothy is that he did struggle. Uh, He struggled with fear. He was human. Uh, He had issues. And see, this book, 1 Timothy, is a book of encouragement. It's It's a book of building up. If you ever wanted to look at Discipleship 101, if you wanted to look at, at, at church, uh, how, how to build a church, you want to go and look at these books because this is a letter written from the mentor to the student. This is from Paul, who was one of the greatest apostles, to the student, Timothy. Now, we know that he was dealing with turmoil because in, in 1 Timothy, it talks about false doctrines and it talks about how to address the false doctrines that are being taught in the church and what you should do. 
And so in 1 Timothy uh, 1, verse 18, Paul writes, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well. Now, if you go to the Passion Translation, verse 18 and 19, Timothy, my son, I am entrusting you with this responsibility in keeping with the very first prophecies that were spoken over your life and are now in the process of fulfillment in this great work of ministry in keeping with the prophecy spoken over you. With this encouragement, use your prophecies as weapons as you wage spiritual warfare by faith and with a clean conscience. He says, keeping with the first prophecies, he's reminding them, Timothy, go back and look at what was spoken over your life in the beginning. Timothy, go back and see whose you are and who you are. Go back and look at what I've already added to your table, what I've already placed there so that you can know exactly what you're supposed to do. Because I know, Timothy, that there's false doctrines. I know that people are coming up against you. I know that you're in an unfamiliar land, but I want you to go back and look and see what I spoke to you. What were the first prophecies? What were the first promises that I spoke over your life? Go back and see whose you are. You see, he tells them, fight your battle well, which tells me that there may be a way that we cannot fight our battles well. We might be fighting a battle, but it, we may not be doing it, doing it well. So I want you, I just want to encourage you today. Go back and look and look at the table, look at the structure and see what the promises were that were spoken over your life. It's okay to go back. I go back all the time. I've got a notebook full of prophetic words that have been spoken over my life. Some of them took 30 years to, to come to fruition. And I remember walking that out. I remember being 35 years old and saying, Lord, did you change your mind about me? Did you realize that I'm not that great of a person that maybe that you made a mistake? It's okay to go back. And the Lord says, no, go back and look at the first things that were spoken over your life so that you may fight your battle well. Because here's the deal. We are all, we are all, me, you, the church, we are all warriors. There is a spiritual battle being waged whether you want to admit it or not. There is a spiritual being, battle being waged. And there is an enemy out there who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to bring discouragement where God brings encouragement. He comes to bring disengagement. He doesn't want you to fight your battle well. He doesn't want you to go back and look at what's been spoken over your life. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what, that's what Paul here, that's why he's writing this letter. He's writing it to encourage them. He's writing it to reconfirm because prophetic words bring encouragement. It calls up, it calls out who, who you are in Christ. And this letter to Timothy from Paul is calling up and saying, Timothy, hey, remember who you are. I know things aren't going the way that you expect them to, but remember who you are. This is your time. This is what you were created for. How many times in our own life do we need that type of reassurance? In Paul's second letter to Timothy, he would write, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love. Sound mind. So Timothy does struggle with fear. Otherwise, Paul wouldn't be telling him this. So we, we establish that he's human. We establish that at multiple points in, in my life, in your life, somebody needs to hear this today. It's okay to go back and look because new things are going to come onto your table. New things, new situation. You're going to find your table. Picture yourself as this table and picture the legs as prophetic words and promises that God has spoken into your life. And I just want to let you know, it's okay to go back and look. We have to, we all have to go back and look. We have to go back and look and be reminded of the prophetic words because prophetic leads to increase. And in order to increase, in order for this table to grow, we've got to have more stability and we've got to see exactly what God is doing, exactly what God has placed, exactly what God has added. Because when I go back and I look and I say, okay, this is what the Lord told me on this date. This is what the Lord said about me. Okay, I can handle this now. 
Lord, you want me to move with my family four hours away? You want me to go serve you? Okay, I can handle this now because I know that you said this right here. Look at Abraham. Abraham made, made the, the hero's list. He made Hebrews. The Lord told Abraham in Genesis 12, this is a living word from a living God to a living person. This is prophetic. This is prophecy. The Lord told Abraham, leave your country, your people, your father's household. Go to the land that I will show you and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. That's in Genesis 12. Now we look back in Genesis 13 and God reconfirms that call in Abraham's life after Lot leaves for Sodom. And the Lord says, hey, remember this. Remember who you are, Abraham. Remember what I've told you. I'm going to do all this. I will make a great nation. And then in Genesis 15, God comes back and reaffirms this calling. When Abraham is struggling with fear, he, he's fearful that these other kings from these other nations and kingdoms are going to attack him. And he, he's struggling with fear. And God has to come back and say, Abraham, go look at your table. Go look at what I've already said. Go back and look. And then Genesis 17, Abraham sins and he takes matters into his own hands and he says, God, I know that you've said all this, but hey, look, my wife is in her 80s. I'm in my 80s. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to take this other wife. That, that I'm going to take her. She's going to have a son. And Lord, that's how I will build. That's how I build the kingdom. And that's how it's going to happen. And God said, no, hold up. Go look at the table. Go look at the prophetic words that I've spoken over your life. And remember who you are and who I said you were and what I said I was going to do in your life. Amen. And then Genesis 22, that's my that's one of my favorite parts. Abraham's now 100 years old, over 100 years old. He's seen this promise happen. He's, he's seen Sarah, who was barren, uh, have a son, Isaac. And now the Lord says, hey, I want you to take him up and you're going to sacrifice him. And so he does this out of obedience. He takes Isaac up to sacrifice him. And then the Lord comes back. And, and because of Abraham's obedience, the Lord saves Isaac's life. And then the Lord turns around and reconfirms and says, hey, go back to the table. Go back and look at the prophetic words because, hey, the prophetic brings increase. And this is what I told you what would happen all these decades ago. And it's to encourage him. Abraham had this promise, yet he needed continual reconfirming. He needed encouragement. He needed to be built up. He needed to be reminded, hey, go check your table. I know this seems impossible, but I've already said it. It is already in place. I've already built it for you. This is you. Things change. Promises do not change. What I've told you is still there today. It's already been won, no matter what it looks like. Now, Noah, the Lord told Noah in Genesis chapter six to build an ark for he and his family and the animals. And he said that he was going to destroy the world because there's so much sin. But it says Noah was a righteous man in the eyes of the Lord. What I love about this is because that's Genesis 6. <clears throat> and then if you go to Genesis 7, the rain starts. And so picture this. Growing up, you've got coloring books. And it's the story of Noah. And there's going to be a picture of, of Noah and he's chopping down trees. And, and it says, and the Lord told Noah, he made a promise to him. And this is, how, this is going to happen. And then the very next page, it shows a whole boat and it shows rain. And you're like, oh, look, Noah did that in one page. And it, you go into the Bible and you look at it, Genesis 6. Hey, Noah, build an ark. Genesis 7, it's, it, it's raining. What I love about this, though, <clears throat> is picture Noah on day one. The Lord told him to go build an ark. And so he gets up, he gives his wife a kiss, <coughs> he packs a lunch, he goes out to the woods, he finds a gopher tree, whatever that is, and then he grabs his saw and he starts to saw and it's like, all right, we're going, we're going, we're working. Isn't this great? I'm working for the Lord. Goes home. He's sore, but he's doing the Lord's work. The Lord told him, hey, all this is going to happen. Day two, gets back up, goes back, probably saw in the same tree, working. He's working. He's working. It's great, and he's happy. <clears throat> two weeks into it, he's got blisters. His back's hurting. His leg's hurting. He's hurting all over. Oh, I'm doing the Lord's work, though. This is great. 
God, you said this. You made this promise to me. We're good. People are starting to talk in town. That crazy old man's been out in the woods now for, for a couple months. Ten years later, he's been out there for 10 years chopping down trees. Do you think his wife looked at him a little weird? I mean, we've been, we've been in quarantine for like two months, three months, and we're going crazy. I'm kidding. We're not going crazy. My wife's doing an amazing job taking care of the kids. But it took Noah, what my coloring book shows me just one page, it took Noah 100 years to build this ark. Don't you think at some point in the middle of this, when his wife thinks he's going crazy, when his kids thinks he's going crazy, we know the townspeople knew that he was going crazy because there's pictures of them in my coloring book when I was growing up in Sunday school. So we know everybody thought he was crazy. Don't you think at some point in that 100 years, what we don't see, all we see is Lord told him he's going uh, he's gonna to do this. He went and built the ark. There's a flood. Everybody died. It was great. Restored, promise made, promise kept. What we don't see is that at some point in that 100 years, I'm sure more than once, Noah had to go back to the Lord and the Lord said, hey, Noah, go look, go look at the table. Go look what I've already placed in your life. Go look at the promises, the prophetic words, because that's going to bring the increase. Go back and look at it. We don't see that. We don't see the, the struggle. We don't see the blood, the sweat, the tears that came out of Noah in that 100 years. We get upset if we wait more than 15 minutes in the, in the to-go line at, at Chick-fil-A. But he said, go back and look. I've already placed you in it. I've already put this in your life. I've added it right there. And you got that to hold on to because you know who you are. And you know who I am. And you know that what I have promised you is going to come true. Don't you think Joseph... The Lord gives him a promise, a prophetic word, a vision. And he thinks it's going to happen immediately. He runs out and tells all of his brothers. Don't you think when he's sitting in, <clears throat> in slavery, it says they walked him out naked to be sold. Don't you think when he's being paraded around naked, he's saying, Lord, where's, what, what happened? You told me this. What is happening? And the Lord said, hey, Joseph, go back and look. It's already there. The prophetic brings increase. I've already put it there. So now your table can handle it. Your foundation can handle it because of who I am and because of who you are in me. <clears throat> prophetic words come at just the right time. I'm sure each time that the Lord spoke to Abraham, it was at just the right time. I'm sure each time the Lord spoke to Noah, it was at just the right time. A couple years ago, I was with my mom. She needed a new cell phone. And my mom and technology don't go well together. I'll say that. She's probably watching because uh, she loves me. Uh, not because I went with her to get a cell phone. But she wanted me to go with her to get a cell phone. I'm like, Mom, please. And she just wants a cell phone. But because I'm the son, I don't want somebody to take advantage of her. I go with her. I'm going to be the protective son. And we're in there, and this dude was really nice. He's waiting on us. He's taking care of her. And while he's sitting there talking to her, and I'm just, I'm just there. <clears throat> while we're there, though, I heard the Lord say, tell him that he is a great dad. I'm like, Lord, I just came in here to get a cell phone. I, don't, I didn't come in here to prophesy over anybody. And the Lord said, tell him he is a great dad, and tell him don't stop fighting for his son. I'm like, oh, Lord. This would be so much easier if this guy was in my church on a Sunday morning. Then I could prophesy him and be great. But I'm just here with my mom, I'm not trying to make a scene. And the Lord said very clearly, tell him that he is a great dad and don't stop fighting for his son. I'm like, all right, okay, God. All right, we'll do it. And then the next 10 minutes was me trying to build up the courage and saying, David, this is just you. It's not God. And, and me trying to step out in faith. But it's not about that. We get to the very end. Uh, my mom signed the contract. She's got the new phone. We're talking. <clears throat> he reaches down to shake my hand. And I just said, hey, I just wanted to tell you, I'm a praying guy. And I believe the Lord still speaks to me. And when I was praying, I felt like the Lord told me, he wanted me to tell you that, that you are a great dad. And he's like, I don't have no kids. I'm like, okay. And he's like, why do you say that? And I was like, well, the Lord told me to tell you, you are a great dad. 
and don't stop fighting for your son. And he had just told me he didn't have no kids. I'm like, all right, I missed it. But I was obedient. I did what the Lord had told me. This dude, all of a sudden, you would think, you would, I don't know what you would think. He starts bawling in the middle of at and store. He starts crying. And he looks at my mom. He's like, this is weird. How did he do that? And my mom's like, I don't know. And she was like, he prays. And I'm like, yeah, I prayed. And the guy looks at me. He's like, and he then just unpacks his whole story. It turns out he had a son. Well, <clears throat> he was in a relationship for four years with a woman and she had a one-year-old when they started dating. They'd been together for four years. So now this little boy was five. They had just split up. The relationship was over and he is still supporting this little boy financially because he had been living as his father for, for the last four years. <coughs> and in the middle of that, the, his family, his friends are all telling him, hey, David, or they're, they're telling him, hey, you're not, even, you're not even married to her. That's not even your real son. Quit sending money to him. Just let him go. Your relationship was over. You're never going to get her back. It's done. Move along. You don't owe anything to her, and you don't owe anything to this kid. And so the world's telling him, hey, give up. Move along. Your relationship's over. But then the Lord comes in one day and catches him at work and says, hey, you're a great dad. Don't stop fighting for your son. He received a living word from a living God to a living person that day. And it was at a timely place. And the Lord's basically telling him, hey, go back and look because this is who I said you are. And this is what I said you're going to do. Be encouraged. It's okay to be reminded. Be encouraged because you can handle you can handle raising a little boy that's not your own son because this is the promise that I've made to you. And so I just want to encourage you today because prophetic words always bring increase, <clears throat> but we have to be obedient. We have to be able to go back and look. It is okay to go back and look. It's okay to go back and, and see what the promises were because we can't stop fighting. Like I said, we are in a battle. It is a spiritual warfare. And we have to be reminded because our job is to advance the kingdom of God. And at some point in that journey, at some point in that battle, we have to be like Timothy and we have to be able to go back and look and say, okay, God, I think I can handle this because you said this to me in my life. All right, you want me to do that? We can do that. We, we, we can handle that. Because it may look crazy in the world's eyes. It, it looked crazy for Noah to go out and build a boat for 100 years. I guarantee it. But it wasn't crazy to him because he went and he read and he saw the words that the Lord had spoken over his life and he wrote them down and they went in and they secured the foundation so that he could, could handle more, so that the increase could come. And Abraham, it looked crazy for him to leave his homeland, to leave his father's land and to move his family. And it looked crazy for him to be 100 years old and to think that he would actually have a son and that there would be a whole nation, that there would be many that would come from him. But God came back to him and said, hey, remember who you are. Remember who I said you were. All things are possible. And so I just want to encourage you today the prophetic always brings increase. What are the words that have been spoken over your life? What are you struggling with? Are you like Timothy? Are you struggling with fear? Are you struggling with doubt? Are you questioning your calling, who, who God said you are? Go back and look. Go back to the very last thing that the Lord spoke to you. Go back and look at it and say, God, this is who you said I am. What are you trying to handle on your table that you can't handle on your own, that you need the, the reinforcement of the Holy Spirit? You need to go back and look and see what was that promise that he's already spoken to you over your life. Amen? It reminds us when we need it most, the prophetic. It encourages us. It calls up. It calls out our destiny. It calls up who we are in him. It reminds us who we are and who he is. With that, I just want to take a moment. I just want to pray for you today. Um, 
because I do feel like uh, in this moment, I do feel like this, this is an opportunity uh, for all of us. This is an opportunity. Um, today does not look like yesterday. Uh, this month does not look like last month. We are in changing times. Um, there's so many different things happening right now that, that we need as a church, we need as individuals, we need to go back and say, what were the things that the Lord has promised us? What has he told us that he is gonna do? What is that in your life? So I just wanna pray for you this morning. Um, I just wanna encourage you uh, because I feel like this is a, a timely word. I feel like this is a message for the church and for our city. Um, for the nations, because at some point we're going to have to go back and look so we can see who we were. So with that, if you would just, uh, you know, here here at City Church, uh, our posture receiving is just placing our hands out in front of us. If you would just place your hands out in front of you. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are. God, I thank you for what you have done in my life. I thank you for, for the calling that you did place on my life at a, young, at, at, at a young age, Lord. God, I thank you for the, just the route, the, the expanse that you will go through to, to reach me, Lord. Even in all my errors, even in all my ways, Lord. I thank you that you are a God that does still speak to us. I thank you, Lord, that you are a God that, that, that does bring living words, that does encourage us, Father. Lord, I thank you for the increase that is about to be poured out on this city, on this nation, on this church. Lord, I thank you for that increase. But God, I pray that you would just make my friends at home, make them bold this week. Bold, Lord, just remind them who they are. Remind them what you've already built, what you've already placed in their life, the prophetic words, the truths, the promises. Lord, the, the pruning that has already happened. Lord, I thank you for all that. I, I praise you in that. I rejoice in that, Lord. I thank you. <clears throat> and if there's anyone watching that, that has never made that commitment, that has never asked the Lord uh, to come into their life, I just want to, I, I don't want to leave this opportunity without giving you that chance this morning. So uh, if that's you this morning, <clears throat> I just want to pray for you and you can just repeat after me. Dear Father, I thank you for, for dying on the cross for my sins. Lord, I ask that you would just forgive me of all my sins. Lord, make me a new creation in you. Bring me new life. Lord, I'll live my life for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If that was you, if, if, if you prayed that prayer, then I want you to just leave us a comment in, in the box. You can just write, um, I said yes. Just write that. Or just write yes in the box. If you need prayer requests, I just encourage you, uh, you can share it in the comments. You can send us a message uh, on our website. You can click the prayer tab. You can send us a direct message on our City Church page. But I just want to encourage you. I want to bless you. I just pray that you just have a wonderful week. I pray that you are encouraged um, and just bless you. I look forward to seeing you in person. Um, I really do. I thank you for everything. So have a blessed day. Amen.